If you've got any blemishes, you can put it on topically and because it constricts blood vessels and makes them small and tight, that suit's gonna be looking a whole lot smaller and pretty quick too. It's Dr. Victoria and George. All right, I have got some hygiene tips for you today. We're gonna talk about, well, what is personal hygiene? Why is it important for our health and self-esteem? And we're gonna work our way from head to toe. So when it comes to our hair, we wanna make sure that we wash regularly with a mild shampoo. But if you've got curly hair like me, you may not need as much shampoo as someone with straight hair. Because someone with straight hair, the oils will move down the hair strand more quickly. And so with the curly hair, the oil doesn't move as fast. And so you might need to use conditioner a little more often. A gentle massage can help promote blood flow to the scalp. And you wanna be careful with that dry shampoo because folks can get some fungal infections on the scalp when they use that regularly. And so you can get an itchy red and flaky scalp when that happens. The um, Some things that can help over the counter that Selsun Blue shampoo that's medicated can work, but if it's getting really bad, you might need something with a higher potency or stronger that is a prescription medicine. When it comes to our face, we wanna make sure we wash our face with a cleanser at least once a day. And if you're makeup, wearing makeup, you wanna wash twice a day to make sure you get it off. You wanna pick products that are just right for your skin, whether it's dry or oily or there's combo skin or there's some parts that are oily and some parts that are dry. You want to avoid scents. You want to avoid gritty products because that will actually scratch the top layer of your skin and can make acne worse. So instead of using a mechanical exfoliant, exfoliant you want to use a, a chemical exfoliant and that will help get rid of that top layer of skin. You want to moisturize your skin and you want to protect your skin with some sunscreen. For acne, there's a few things that can help like benzoyl peroxide. And you can find this at pretty much any uh, like grocery store or pharmacy um, or drug store. They should all have their, quite frankly, even their own version of benzoyl peroxide. A cleanser with salicylic acid can be helpful. Sometimes topical retinoids help to promote um, kind of skin turnover, if that makes sense, to help slough off that top layer of skin. And if acne is present and really bad, sometimes we need to do antibiotics. And that benzoyl peroxide helps to kill off bacteria as well. And when it comes to our teeth, we want to make sure that we're brushing our teeth twice a day. You need to floss every day. I have people tell me all the time, oh, I don't like going to the dentist. Well, if you want to stay out of the dentist office, you need to floss your teeth. So a regular dental checkup is usually gonna be every six months. And things that stain your teeth are gonna be coffee, black tea, turmeric, red wine, and sometimes after eating these things. So say I make a curry and I know there's plenty of turmeric in there to give it that nice bright yellow color. I might wanna brush my teeth afterwards to help prevent stains. And you wanna make sure that you brush your tooths, your toothbrushes regularly or if you have strep throat, three days after getting antibiotics, you wanna change out your toothbrush. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep getting reinfected because the bacteria is living on your toothbrush. When it comes to our ears, we wanna make sure we just wash the outside of our ear with a soft washcloth, and we do not need to put anything in our ear. No Q-tips, because all that does is it just pushes the earwax deeper. Don't put anything bigger than an then a knuckle in your ear. And if you're having any pain or discomfort, you might wanna go see your doctor. And this one's a little more tricky, but if you can dry your ears after swimming, this will help prevent infections. So drying your ears after you swim or shower can be helpful. When it comes to our eyes, we wanna make sure that we keep our hands away from our eyes so we don't get infection. And we wanna use makeup appropriately so take your mascara off before you go to bed and you do not want to leave contacts in overnight. That is bad news bears. And if your eyes are dry, try some saline, that's salt water eye drops. Preservative free is usually gonna be better. And if you your eyes are red, is there a reason? Are you sick? Do you need sleep? Um, have you been smoking some weed? Do not use that visine stuff to get the redness out. I do not recommend that. 
you don't need that. Let's find out the underlying issue. Now, when it comes to allergies, and for the region I live in, people have allergies all year round. A steroid nasal spray is gonna be most effective, but most people use it wrong. When you use your nasal spray, think Flonase or Nasacord or the drugstore version or the Walmart version, it doesn't matter. You wanna go up your nose and angle it out towards your ear because if you go straight up, the spray goes up, down the back of your throat, it did you no good. If you go in, you just gave yourself a nosebleed. So you wanna go up, out towards your ear, maybe chin up like we're in cookie sniffing position, gentle sniff, ah, peanut butter cookies or your cookie of choice. Because if I do a big snort, the medicine comes up down the back of my throat and it did me no good. Now there's something else that works quickly, but is not good to use more than three days. And that's something called Afrin and it constricts our blood vessels. And we can have rebound congestion if we use it. And then say we do it longer than those three days, the body's like, well, I'm used to having constricted blood vessels and tight blood vessels. I don't want to have normal sized ones anymore. And you're going to have a runny nose like a faucet and you're going to be miserable for at least a few weeks. So do not use that for more than three days, but it's also helpful for if you've got any blemishes, you can put it on topically and because it constricts blood vessels and makes them small and tight, that's it's going to be looking a whole lot smaller and pretty quick too. So afrin, three days only if we've got some nasal congestion, but use it on visits and keep it in the drawer. If you do have nosebleeds, a little Vaseline just on the inside of your nose and going up. So go in just a little bit, that can be helpful. And the nose hair, everyone loves to hate on the, the nose hairs, but they are important because they filter out dust and particles. And so if you do have some hanging a little lower than maybe you want, trimming is gonna be better than plucking those suckers out. When it comes to our heart and exercise, there's so many benefits. We, um, our heart gets healthy. We help prevent diabetes and obesity. For teens and children, we need to be doing at least one hour every single day of huffing and puffing. For adults, this is gonna be over the age of 18. Our goal for heart health is 150 minutes of exercise a week. But if we're trying to use exercise for weight loss, it doubles. So that's 300 minutes. Um, and so that's gonna be closer to an hour, five or six days a week. You wanna make sure that you find an enjoyable form of exercise, whether it's sports or working out with a workout video. Maybe you like a punching bag or maybe you like weightlifting. You wanna make sure that whatever you pick, that this is sustainable and something that you can keep on doing. And exercise is gonna be 1.5 times better than medicine for depression and anxiety. So sometimes we still need some medicine, but we wanna make sure we try the exercise first. Now, when it comes to how much water we need, for adult women, we need about two liters of water a day, which is 64 ounces, and men is gonna be at least two and a half liters of water a day, but that can increase depending on how, how active you are and what kind of climate you're in. When it comes to our nails, it is important to wash our hands to help control infection. Whether it's viruses or bacteria, we wanna make sure we wash our hands. It can be helpful to keep our nails trimmed and keep them clean. Long nails are going to need more maintenance. So you see folks with those long fingernails, I'll be honest, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they get anything done and man, like you gotta clean under, under those guys to make sure you're not spreading bacteria. Like, I don't know, I've not had the really long nails, so I don't know what the usual habits are to keep the nails clean, but I will make sure I will get a little scrub brush if, if I were keen to keep those. When you're using personal nail care tools, you do not wanna share clippers. I recommend everyone in the household should have their own nails, their own nail clippers, because you can share fungal infections. So say dad has some toenail fungus going on, you grab those and well, look at that. We got some, some nail fungus going on. That being said, um, sometimes uh, to clip not make claws, I might've grabbed my husband's nail clippers because I couldn't find her claw clippers. Do not tell him, thank you. 
getting in the shower. So we want to make sure that we shower regularly, or you could have a bath instead. You want to clean all body parts, including hard to reach areas such as the booty. And when you have sensitive skin, scent free products usually are the best. And loofahs, they can harbor bacteria. So throw it in your washing machine every now and then. And when you're drying off, I recommend that, remember we were talking about fung fungus by the toes, you want to dry your toes off really well to help prevent fungal infections. When it comes to the booty, you might need to give it a good scrub in the shower. And you want to make sure you avoid constipation. So a high fiber diet is going to help with this and plenty of water. And hemorrhoids, so this is where a blood vessel kind of develops and gets a little larger and hangs out kind of out the rear end, and that happens with constipation. So I have quite a few things that can help with that, but making sure that we don't spend too much time on the toilet goes a long way to preventing hemorrhoids. And when it comes to sitting on the toilet, for women, make sure that you wipe from the front to the back. Um, ah. I'm surprised the number of folks that do not know that, and that is a good way to get a urinary tract infection if you're going from back to front. And make sure that you dispose of your sanitary products in the right spot. Some people are on septic systems. So that's like a big tank by the house or the building where all the stuff goes. It is not a good idea to be throwing tampons in there. So it might go better to go in the trash. Depends on how robust and how strong your septic system is. Fiber is going to be in things like whole grains, our fruits, our vegetables, um, our rolled or steel cut oats, um, wheat and spelt and barley and beans. Those are all going to be having fiber in them in their natural state. Sometimes we strip the fiber out. So say you have like white flour versus brown flour. Brown flour still has the husk attached. So it's a little nuttier. It's got some fiber in there. It's got vitamins in there. Whereas our white flour, the husk has been stripped off. So all the fiber and the vitamins and the nutrients have pretty much been taken away. And all you're left with is the starch. Fluffy, delicious starch, but starch all the same. Our sensitive regions, you want to wash your external genitalia with water. Soap is okay on the inside. You want to avoid anything on the inside. You do not want to be... Uh, putting any soap up there because it likes to keep its own pH. So pH tells us how acidic or basic something is. So think of think of acid like lemon juice or vinegar is acidic and something basic is going to be like your baking soda, something so a little more basic. So uh, it, it takes care of itself. We don't need to do a whole lot for it. And make sure that you change your underwear every day. Cotton and bamboo are going to be some of the more breathable fabrics. So if you've got a polyester uh, underwear, sometimes the, the gusset or the little bit of fabric will be made of cotton and that will help, but it's still not going to be as breathable as an all cotton underwear. And when it comes to thongs, I do not recommend that you use those when you're especially when you're exercising because you're moving around a little bit more. And that is a really good way to get bacteria from the booty, travel its way up through some of that friction and cause issues for our lady parts and our bladder. So if we could avoid that, that would be very, very good. Now, when it comes to our feet, I talked to you about um, not sharing our toenail clippers, drying our toes off. That can be helpful when it comes to preventing toenail fungus from happening and wearing breathable shoes and clean socks can also be really, really helpful to keep our feet happy and healthy. And if someone has diabetes where they have sugar problems and sugar that gets really high, it's really important for them to look at the bottom of their feet, um, at hopefully every day, but at least on a regular basis so that they can check and see if there's any nicks or scrapes because when people have diabetes, they don't feel their feet very well. And that's how people lose toes because they don't notice they have a cut. And before we know it, we're chopping that sucker off. So just you know, throwing that out there, make sure you check. And now I thought I would mention sleep hygiene, which is a little bit different, but you wanna make sure that you're sleeping for teens. It's gonna be eight to 10 hours. For adults, we're gonna be closer to seven to nine. That's our goal. You want to make sure you have a regular sleep schedule. 
You want to make sure you create a comfortable sleeping environment, go to bed and get up about the same time every day. No caffeine. I usually say not past 11 in the morning. Technically it is, what is it? 8.9 hours you want to be caffeine free before you go to bed. So avoid eating close to bedtime. Give yourself at least three hours. You want to avoid alcohol in the late afternoon, the evening, and at bedtime. Sure, it helps people fall asleep, but then they don't have good sleep and they often sweat at night. They have a hard time maintaining sleep and they often wake up. And you want to avoid smoking. And this is not just cigarettes. I'm talking vaping. I'm talking weed. All that's going to disturb our sleep. We want the bedroom to be dark, cool, and quiet. And you want to try and solve your problems before you go to bed if you can. Sometimes even writing it down can be helpful so that you're not dwelling on it. You're like, I've got it written down. I'm going to work on it tomorrow. And make sure you get plenty of physical activity, but ideally not right before bed because exercising, um, but you want, so you want to exercise at least four to six hours before you actually go to bed. That will have the best impact on sleep. And you want to avoid looking at your phone or reading devices. That's going to give off light before bed. The literature says two hours. I say if you can do at least half hour before bed with no screen, we're talking TV, phone, tablet, um, Xbox, um, any video game, anything like that. And there's a couple reasons for this. One is the refresh rate of the images you see. It's actually really hard for the brain because it has to put in a lot of effort to interpret what it's seeing. So that's one reason. The other is that the bright light dampens down our natural sleep hormone called melatonin. So you might have gotten this from the grocery store before. We're like, oh, I'll take melatonin, help me fall asleep. Okay, uh, But we can have natural melatonin levels. They gradually increase as the sun goes down. But because we have so many artificial lights and our phones, sometimes our natural health melatonin levels are staying low long term. And no, the blue light glasses do not help with this. Sorry. The, let's see, also say you are having a hard time sleeping. You don't wanna check the time at night. Try and keep alarm clocks, watches, and smartphones out of your line of sight. Checking in the middle of the night can make you feel more awake and it can make it harder to fall back asleep. You wanna avoid long naps if you have a hard time sleeping at night, especially in the late afternoon. But on the flip side, if you're doing a shorter nap, about 20 minutes, it can be helpful, especially if your work schedule changes day to day and you need to be alert at different times of the day. So that can be helpful maybe if you're doing shift work. When it comes to our clothing, you wanna make sure that you're wearing clean, weather appropriate clothes and it can be helpful to understand the little label on the inside of your clothes to know if you have to wash it with the same colors or if you need to not put it in the washing machine or if um, or if it needs to go to the dry cleaner. And I'm sorry you brought that because it is a pain in the neck to take things to the dry cleaner. But you can get away with washing your sweaters on every time. But if you have visible stains or things are starting to smell, is gonna be better to wash them. Now, let's think just a little bit about our gut. We talked about fiber, but our having some nutritional gut hygiene is helpful as well. So make sure we understand what food needs to be kept in the refrigerator or the freezer. Bacteria is going to grow at room temperature and the fridge in the freezer slows how quickly it grows. You wanna make sure lids are on tight when you close your packages or your flour so that we can keep critters out more of an issue in some places of the world and depending on what food you eat that feeds certain kinds of bacteria in our gut and we have bacteria that lives in our in our gut and we want to feed the kind of food so that we grow the right kind of bacteria and we know that some kinds and strains of bacteria are associated with a higher body weight and some are going to be associated with a leaner body. And when we, it's the things we know we're supposed to do. Fruits and vegetables, leaner cuts of meat, and that will help build the good kind of bacteria in your gut. 
Whereas if we eat a highly processed diet, so think things that come in packages, things that come from fast food restaurants, it's been broken down so much, the body doesn't need to do any work and the bacteria are kind of out of a job. And some bacteria really likes being lazy and not needing to break down a whole lot. And those are the kind of bacteria we want to avoid. And say, I think about our brain and having good mental health hygiene. If we need to seek out help for our emotional well-being, you can check with your doctor, a counselor, sometimes even a friend or a member of clergy. If, you're, if you enjoy going to church, sometimes they can be helpful. There can be some stress reduction techniques like mindfulness. And if you want to know more about this, just let me know. So thank you for joining me today, my healthcare team. I hope you enjoyed this. And if there's something that you want me to delve into a little more specifically, just let me know. Leave it in the comments below. But I hope you'll join us next time. Bye-bye.